guys are enjoying yourselves. Are you excited? Have you guys been enjoying the Act STEM lessons? If you have, let's see what you guys have to say in the chat. Um, but we want to invite you guys back and we're excited for today's lesson. Today is focusing on homemade hydroponics. And I wanted to turn it over to our presenter for today, John Paul. And John Paul, is going, I'm going to turn it over to him and he's going to take us through a great activity today. So if you're excited, let's get ready and let's roll. Uh, thank you, Ryan. Uh, I said, uh, my name is Jean Paul Yacadamier, uh, first year master student at Purdue in the Department of Agriculture, Science, Education, and Communication. I'm glad to be with you tonight. Uh, we'll be talking about designing a homemade hydroponics. Uh, starting, I would, I would be glad to, for you also to introduce yourselves. Uh, Mainly to be easier to use the chat, where you just tell me your names and any type of uh, vegetables you like. Starting by myself, I like uh, broccoli and lettuce. Yeah, I look forward to seeing what you like as well. Okay, uh, there's no break. Yes, I ask uh, everyone to share with me any type of vegetable they like and with their names. Type of vegetables you like. Vegetable that you like. All right, thank you. Zo who like carrots and corn. Okay, thank you, Nair, who like tomatoes from garden. And Young, her favorite is carrots. Uh, about it, hopefully you like all of them. <laughs> uh, I some green beans and corns. All right, so uh, moving forward, I would, I would like to ask a question. Uh, what do you think about crops? Like wh what do crops need to grow like in the farms? Or somewhere else, like, what do you think crop needs to grow? Yeah, thank you, Ed. Water, sunlight, uh, something else, soil, soil, yes. All of your answers are correct. Nutrients, yes. All right, so that was just kind of question we would start from. Uh, basically today, the, uh, I look forward that at the end of this lesson, you will be able to state the basics that the plants needs to grow. You will know what the word hydroponic system mean. And also we specifically focus on the growing media of hydroponics. Uh, that's what makes uh, hydroponics different from the farming system we usually know. And at the end, we'll be able to design our small homemade hydroponics. 
So as you were talking about previously, all your answers were really correct uh, on what plants needs to grow. Basically, plants need five things in order to grow well. Most of you have shared the water and sunlight. Uh, plants also need air because they, they absorb uh, the CO2 and give us oxygen in order they call for the synthesis that we'll talk about later. Also, the soil, as you said. Uh, one thing that most of you didn't mention is space because plants, when growing, uh, absorbing water or getting sunlight, if there are a lot of plants in a very small space, they might be risk for getting fewer water, they might be risk for not getting enough light, which will, would interfere with their growth. So, uh, talking about <clears throat> all those needs for plants, uh, you can see on the screen that we have different pictures showing us crops growing. Uh, we mentioned the what they need, but there is also a way they grow, uh, which, which are different. As you mentioned, on the left side, you can see a conventional farming, and on the other side, you can see the hydroponic system. If anyone can help me to, to spot the main difference between the crops we see on the left side and the one we see on the right side, uh, thinking about how they are grown. Uh, thank you, Swara, who said the ones on the left are grown in the soil. That's correct. The plants grow in the water on the right. Good answers. Uh, here, what you are seeing is on the left side, you can see that uh, these <coughs> vegetables are grown in the soil. And on the right side, you can see a soilless environment. Uh, which is what I mentioned about hydroponics uh, that we are going to see in the following slide. Yeah, as I was saying, we saw a big difference between the pictures on the left and the one on the right side. And I like that some of you have realized that the one on the right didn't need soil to grow. So which is typically uh, what makes hydroponics different. So by definition, hydroponics is a technique of growing plants in a nutrient solution with or without use of a nut media prevent mechanical support. Uh, we realized that soil is what it was uh, normally used in a conventional farming. And the two major role soil plays to plants is to provide that environment where plants can absorb nutrients, but also uh, to provide a mechanical support. Uh, as science and technology ha has advanced, there have been created other options that can replace soil, and yet plants will get everything they need to grow properly. And one of them, the one we'll be focusing on today, is hydroponics. As you can see in the picture, <clears throat> uh, plants 
don't need soil to grow. We can see uh, roots whereby water is just moving below, below the roots and the roots are taking advantage to absorb nutrients. And the growing media in the black cara, that's what is supporting the plant so that they can stand and grow upward. Uh, that being said, hydroponics didn't just simply eliminate uh, soil for no reason. There is importance of replacing soil with other ground medium uh, for both farmers or agriculture in general, but also for the environment. Uh, basically, when you use uh, hydroponics, uh, for the, the purpose of agriculture, it makes it easier to grow uh, much plants on a very small scale. Uh, that is achieved basically by uh, being able to provide enough nutrients, being able to control amount of water used, uh, and many other things. For the environment, you are not, you are not like uh, every season, like cultivating, uh, you are putting enough nutrients so that some other nutrients are not just lost in the runoffs. So you can understand that whenever hydroponics is done, you are contributing both to the advancement of agriculture, at the same time, uh, saving our environment. Uh, I would like to ask, uh, like as we are now talking about the definition and the importance of hydroponics, does anyone have questions so far? Yeah, thank you, uh, Triton. That, that, that's very <laughs> important, yeah, and I like that you, you have an idea about it. All right, I, I can see uh, most of you don't have a question so far. Okay, so let's move forward and talk one of the elements that makes the hydroponics different. Uh, as I said, hydroponics, one of the major difference from uh, the conventional farming is the growing media. There is a lot of things you can use uh, to replace soil and still be able to grow crops and contribute uh, generally as you're talking about to both uh, agricultural development at the same time, saving our environment. Uh, first of all, let's see what a growing medium means. It's any substance through which plants, plant roots grow and extract water and the nutrients. We have seen before that uh, naturally roots absorb nutrients and water from the soil. So now that technology is advancing, there has been uh, other options that can replace soil and still help plants to grow properly. But not everything can be used as a growing media because there are basically three characteristics that any growing media must meet. One, it should be draining water. If it's a substance that doesn't let water like a drain, it will be a problem for the plants because the roots will rot. So the plant, as a result, they will die. At the same time, uh, while <clears throat> where plants are absorbing nutrients or even water itself, they need also air in, in there. So still, uh, talking about drainage, it goes with how the materials are holding water at the same time 
let it go because it should be a balance not too much not not like a very few so i provide with you some examples of uh, the growing media the most common is rock wool that's commercially that's what is used in many farms but also if you have like a gravel you can still use some other form to hold the water because gravel will drain water but if it drains completely it will end up by uh, letting the plants die so this is just a few of them that you can use so that yeah your plants will still grow though you are not using a soil as a growing media and as a result as well not only for the commercial purpose even in our homes you can still grow pure vegetables can grow flowers if you like and it will not uh, require you to go out there and dig on soil all right so now that you we have talked about <coughs> what the growing media is. I can see some have questions. Okay. I, I saw someone who asked like the phonetic forms. Yeah, it's a, another a uh, structure that is not much common in hydroponics, but it's also a structure that can hold a little bit water and uh, at the same time, plant roots can be used to just take a support while plants are growing. Uh, don't worry, Isam, we will we, we'll be working on them. <clears throat> Uh, just the basic idea is to know how you can design it so you can use the same skills for in the future. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Nobrock. Yeah, that's also another example. Because those four are just a few of them. Otherwise, there, there are a lot of them, you can't finish them. Yeah, it's still fine because the whole idea is the understanding of, of what it, it means to, to design your own. So if you understand the process, a later on it should be ready to go when you have all the materials. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, I will just show you, I have some materials here. You will just see how you can use it. I said you will see it's important. So just you can now watch the video and we will try to figure out how we can move forward. Hey, John Paul, there's no sound. It's always like that. I, I guess yeah. that's just, just a little bit. Yeah. Oh. Hello. You cannot click the bolt at the same time. Yeah. That's okay. the challenge. It's okay. Hello everyone, my name is Taylor with Green Our Planet and today we're going to be building a wicking hydroponic system. This is quite a simple system that you can build using a recycled plastic water bottle. A plant is going to be growing in a container of media 
of an inert material such as um, the clay pellets we have today, coconut coir, peat moss, there's a variety of things you can use. They're gonna be situated above a reservoir of nutrient solution with a wick that is going to hang down into that solution. And the water will travel up the wick and stay in contact with the roots of your plant so that it's providing the water, the nutrients to your plant that it needs. I've also seen them made with milk jugs and a variety of different types of containers. We're gonna need some hydroton, expanded clay pellets, or you could use some other inert material like a coconut coir if you like. We've got a, a seedling that we started a couple of weeks ago. We're also, we've got a Sharpie here and a box cutter and some scissors. And the last thing we'll need is some water and our hydroponic nutrients along with a strip of this felt. In a hydroponic wicking system, we're gonna need a wick. And there's a variety of ways you can make a wick. I've seen these systems created where they use an old t-shirt. Today I'm using a plain white felt, no dyes, no additives. And I'm just gonna cut a nice strip. That's all I'm gonna need gonna choose on this bottle here about the second line down this is where I'm going to cut my bottle so we're gonna cut all the way around that line the next step now that we have our bottle in two pieces is that we'll want to insert our wick so I'm gonna put this felt right through the bottle there. And I'm gonna put a few of these hydroton stones down here. A couple of big ones first, so that that hole is blocked up and they're not gonna fall through there. Continue to fill this part of the container with hydroton until our plant is at about the right height where we're gonna want it planted in the container. And one trick I'm gonna make sure to do is I wanna make sure my roots are in contact with this wick so that they don't dry out over time. I'll continue to feed some of these clay pebbles around here until I've got this leveled off up to the top. So we've got our plant and our wick both situated in the container of the, that we cut off the top. These are gonna fit right into the bottom of our container that we're now gonna fill with the nutrient solution we've mixed up here using the MaxiGrow General Hydroponic Fertilizer. We don't wanna overfill it where it's going to overflow when we put our plant in like that. Well, we got just the right amount there. So as you can see, our wick is gonna be hanging down in our nutrient solution. It's gonna be pulling the water through capillary action up to this wick here. So it's gonna be bringing water and nutrients in contact with our plant. At this point, it's a good idea if you're using a clear container like I am right now, to use a piece of construction paper or something to cover this up so that you don't get algae growing in the bottom of your reservoir here. And then you're gonna wanna put this plant either in a well-lit window, out on the patio if it's in nice springtime, or ideally for hydroponics, you wanna use this under a grow light, which is gonna give you total control of your lighting schedule if you're covering this paper, it becomes also a nice art project for students to do. So have fun with your wicking system hydroponics project and let us know what you're growing. All right, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. So our next step will be then to try to design our own. I hope while uh, watching the video, 
you've been able to think about how you can proceed. Uh, I'll help you with some steps. But be before we reach there, uh, I would like to talk about the uh, safety concern. We'll be using uh, sharper items. So please, if you are with your parents or your other siblings, ask for help when you are cutting the bar. Okay, so no, I'm sharing the screen. Uh, I hope you can still see my screen. So let's go for the next step. Uh, here are steps we'll be following. Uh, just feel free to be creative while designing your own. Uh, depending on the size you want, depending on the materials you have. Uh, and also feel free to ask any questions. All right. So, uh, I guess you're ready. Uh, about Yun Song, yes, we are ready to go right now. So I will go first one. So if you, I can see which one. Yeah. Yes. And so I will move you. You can do it at the same time. Okay, uh, about song. Uh, for today, we are basically focusing on the design because plants have a different uh, needs depending on what you want to grow. Uh, if you need help or advice for where to look for or the type of fertilizer you want, yeah, we can still help you. Okay, uh, I'll be working with you. Uh, feel free to ask and, and like at any stage when you have a questions, just let me know. I'll be trying to design my own, but at the same time, I'll be following the chat in case you need help. Step one, you have to do Okay, so, uh, if you're ready, uh, for me, I'm on step one. So uh, I'd, I'd wish if you are ready with me, just step okay already so we can go ahead together. I see song, step okay, I see young ready. Let's do it. All right, so I think most of you are ready. So the first step is to first a line of where you will be cutting your bar. Uh, as you can see on the screen, mine's here. Okay, so uh, if you can't see my screen, step two will be. They should be. They should be able to see your screen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, step two will be just cutting where you you've made your line with the mark. Here's the process that might be a little bit dangerous because it's sharp tonight. You would like to have your parents and then to help you, you know, like um, poking a hole, and then so you can use in tweezers to cut the uh, the the plastic bottle. That would be good. Just be careful. Don't cut your own fingers. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Wang. Yeah, well, the priority is your safety. So 
let's go slowly and ask parents or your other siblings to help you so that we all finish this activity safely. Right now, Jean Paul is on the step three. He already cut, uh, finished the cutting and then cut with the scissors. Everybody, follow up. Are you good on the step three? If you do, you know, give us a thumb, thumbs up or, you know, just typing in the, into the chat. Okay, we right. see some like you have a next step. I have my bottle cut. Great. All right. Okay, so the first step, that's when we need uh, our wig to be uh, put in the bottle opening. And if you have a small wig, it might look like it can fall in the bottle opening. So, uh, that's why I asked you to have something in the form of a sponge so you can cut it and help the wick not fall down through the burrow opening. For me, I've cut a small piece like this. I hope you can see it, which will help us to hold the wick for falling down. So we have some people say they don't have a wick. Uh, so what do you suggest to shampoo here? Okay, if you don't have a wig, uh, at least uh, I, I would wish that you understand it's raw. It's to absorb water from the bottom in the reservoir so that it can suck water and provide water to the plants on the top. So anything you can use that can still absorb water from the reservoir in the bottom and let the plant uh, use its roots to absorb, that will still be fine. Yeah, can I use a hand towel? Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. As long as it can fit, that will still be fine. Yeah. Yeah, the, the cotton balls still be okay. Yeah, color ball will be okay. All right, so uh, I can guess the step four is done right now. That's totally fine, young. All shoes are string, yes. Yeah, I can see good ideas there. You're being very successful. I like that. So wait for a couple of minutes. I think some of them are going mm -hmm. to get samples for the week. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Yang, we'll be waiting for you. Okay, welcome back, Yang. All right, so I hope now Yang is done. So we are going to the step five where we'll be filling uh, our top cutting with our growing media. Uh, most of you might have a gravel. If we have something else, feel free to use it. For me, I brought my own. Okay, so uh, I think you might be seeing uh, my gravel field. Yeah, I think it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if we had the plant like a seedling, this was the. So I couldn't look in the zoom, finding the material. Oh. Yeah, yeah. we are on the step five. Yeah. 
step by now, putting the gravels into the, uh, the container that you just cut. Right. Yeah. On step five, that's when you start now to look at the seedling, if you had one, so that it can fit in very well before we put like water and place in the reservoir. Okay, so I think everybody's on step five. So we're ready to step ahead and go on step six. All right, <clears throat> for the step six, Thank you, uh, Dr. Nobra. So we're placing uh, our wig and in the top cutting in the reservoir yeah, to make sure it fits in. As you can see, mine perfectly fits in the main reservoir, which is leading us to the step seven, where we'll be adding water. All right, I'm on step seven. Who else is with me? Yeah, song, that's totally fine. Uh, as long as we understand the steps and we understand how the design works, this is something you can do even later. Okay, is there someone else who, who is on step seven? Please tap uh, six or seven based on the step you are on. Would you like them to show you uh, what they did? And if you do, you know, Ah, yeah, have them to share with it. Hey, like a picture? You can see, you can have them, you know, put them uh, in front of their camera and then so they can share, share with you what they did. Stop sharing. Yeah, yeah, that's that works too. Yeah. Uh, and please, if you can turn on the video and share with me your design so you can share the results of our work today. Yeah, if you're proud of what you made, you can turn on your video and share with everybody, you know, like what your uh, homemade hydroponics looks like. Yeah, who's ready to share? Let me the first one. I think you can see mine. Uh, who is next? So I did mine and I had to end up using a coffee filter to make my hole smaller because all my marbles were falling in. So I used an old t-shirt as my wick. Wow, excellent. Thank you, Cajun. Uh, someone else?
Yeah, Thailand is fine. If you don't like to share, yeah, don't worry about it. Yeah. yeah. That's fine as well, don't worry. You, Wendy, would you like to share yours? Um, mine kind of didn't work well, but um, so um, I made this thing with um my yard um and then and then some more uh some stones and then like I didn't have a plant grown uh so like plant plant ready so I just filled it up with water and then when I have the plant ready I'm just gonna um put it in there and yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Nan. Uh, someone else? Oh, Mike, yes. Would you like to like share? share? Um. Yeah, so uh, it doesn't have a plant yet, and uh, um, so uh, so this is what mine looks like. And uh, it doesn't have a plant yet. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Mike. Yeah, thank you so much. That's good job. Okay. I'm going to move you back. Uh, all right. So thank you so much. Uh, now that we've been able to design phonics, uh, which is one of the simplest form we can make, but we understand uh, basically uh, the role hydroponics plays both in agriculture. Yeah, so. All right. Yeah, thank you, Aizam. Yeah, that's also a very good design. It really did a good job. All right, so. I see some new message in the chat. Yeah, it's nice. That was fun. Thank you. All right, so we're ready for our next step, uh, now that we've learned uh, what hydroponics is, uh, what role to place, like both in agriculture, in natural resource management, uh, I would like to ask you somebody who, if there's somebody who can share with us what they think about uh, the role science plays in hydroponics. Is there anyone who has thoughts uh, concerning how plants grow, understanding uh, different growing media? What do you think uh, is the role of science in that? Uh, thank you, Yang. Uh, uh, tomorrow, uh, there might be someone else, but you can still share with us the picture of it. Yeah, yeah, and thank you so much. Okay, so uh, let's continue with uh, trying to understand. Uh, what uh, role, uh, maybe science, uh, maybe technology you've seen or understood in doing hydroponics? Is there somebody who has any thoughts?
Okay, so tomorrow is something else. Okay, uh, let's go back to uh, our questions. Uh, basically, I think you might have an idea of uh, if you are replacing soil with other medium, uh, if you are able to measure nutrients that you are using, if you are able to understand how plants grow, uh, what do you think? Is there any science behind that? Okay, thank you, Sam. Some scientists research about hydroponics. Yeah, that's true because uh, when you want to understand how to grow plants with hydroponics, you should uh, first understand how they absorb nutrients. You should uh, understand uh, the amount of water they need. Uh, my, in my course, I think he's saying biology to study plants helps the defense work. Yeah, definitely. Uh, understanding that plant biology, that's uh, what makes scientists uh, be able to design the appropriate type of hydroponics that has plant to grow. Uh, at the same time, uh, there is the use of technology where you can understand the amount of light they need, uh, the amount of nutrients they need, so you can uh, not give too much or too little for them to grow properly. Uh, at the same time, when designing, uh, as you might remember in those two pictures I showed you previously, to design an appropriate uh, place where plant can grow, it uh, requires skills in engineering so that uh, you give plants uh, uh, also, I yeah, thank you, Sam, for saying maybe in the technology part, you might invent more easier way to grow a hydroponics. It will be the engineering part. Yeah, thank you, Sam. That's a very good answer. Because the more you try to uh, make it easier for both uh, those who are doing hydroponics and also for the plants to grow easily, that's uh, typically the result of engineering. We are using the scientific understanding in helping crops to grow properly. So yeah, uh, basically those are the main parts that we can see when you understand the biology of plants and have a technology to help them to grow, then design a place that fits both plants and those who are growing plants uh, it results in a, a good yield and an efficient way to grow crops. Uh, which brings us to the uh, next question. We have talked about uh, how previously, like in the conventional farming, the growing crops, and we saw what we do in hydroponics. So I would like somebody to share the thoughts on how important it might be. Among many of the things you said, uh, there must be a reason somebody might need to, to use hydroponics uh, instead of uh, traditional or conventional farming. What do you think? Uh, you might think, in terms of efficiency, uh, in terms of you might be able to use water plants when you are farming, so it might be easier to do farming, but expense, expensive. You're right. 
some research uh, has found out that hydroponics use less than half of water that is used uh, in conventional farming. So the way uh, water is managed, uh, the way we use uh, nutrients, just that are enough for plants, helps in agricultural efficiency so that you can be able to grow more crops on a very small scale. Uh, as some, um, yeah, that's another uh, good answer from Mike. Uh, hydroponics helps to to prevent some diseases because in the soil there are a lot of soil-born diseases. But when you are using hydroponics, it's easier to control those and disaffect uh, areas because it's a very small area that you can easily maintain. So it helps in disease control. Yeah, those are really very good points. Uh, and the last one is now in envir environment protection. We have seen what hydroponics helps in terms of uh, efficiency in agriculture. Uh, so when you think about now that efficiency, comparing with uh, the conventional farming, uh, how do you think hydroponics helps in environment protection? And some hints can, can be with the Mike's answer with soil. Uh, but also in, okay, so you might be able to reuse the water faster. Absolutely. Uh, apart from using less than half of water that is used in the conventional farming, you can also reuse the water you have used. It's easier to get back the water, just make some tests to make sure it's safe to use it back. So that if you have uh, adequate equipment, you will protect those runoffs where uh, you put uh, some fertilizers that maybe once it rains, they end up in lakes, they end up in rivers, which sometimes uh, they might be uh, come back in in uh, our our area like. Uh, uh, other farms that might get the runoffs so that which is not uh, safe for some of the crops. And because some people put these electronic things under the plant so that the water can get in as much as they need and get out as much as they need. Absolutely, that's also a good point about the efficiency. Yeah, but when you use the water properly, it directly implies also the efficient use of nutrients. So both there is no waste of nutrients in the environment, at the same time, no waste of uh, money uh, that buys those petroleum that end up in the landfill. So that's the totally fine. Yeah, as long as we are sharing our thoughts and understand better what the importance of using hydroponics is. All right, so is there anyone who has any questions so far? All right, so uh, before we go on, I'll go ahead and share with you a link in the chat box uh, so that it's going to take just a few 
Let's take just like less than two minutes, maybe even one. To see. Uh, Okay, you should be able to open the link right now. Yeah, I think everyone now can be able to see the link. Just going to take less than one minute to answer. So if you can help Sean Paul fill out the uh, link, the survey that he just is putting in the chat, that would be great. Any viewer thumbs? Um, just give us a thumbs up. Okay, Aizam. Thank you for open the link and try to fill up for uh, Shampo Aizam. Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you, Dr. Nava. Shampo, need some feedback. He's a student just like you. If you are, you know, if you're done, please just let us know and then give us a thumbs up and um, and then you're, you're free to go. 